and gentlemen. And now, Hinaur Groy Sawi or Shoivan, your Gloir can hand lev. Please now welcome to the stage to close conference. Shawid Amhadevis Plaid Kamri, Honorary President of Plaid Kamri, David Wigley. Mana Lewis or Dravod with the Guiz, Ers Ir A X Seo, Abder Hogshang and Tian, Akorgan Hatlin for a doy. I will write to me about Haglinid and a Knishet, Gal Cloyergan Hatlin, a Mur and Mumrova Hin and Arvon. If the Yoki Bobby in Honor cases with the Kemnokirgan Hatlin, just a third winter, I and Arbenic the Yok, your Crew Oil Lot I Evanks is where the Disclary on a Ganhatlin on. Adioch i gyfeillion y wasg a cyfryngau am fod yma. Rydyn ni'n gwerthorogi diddordeb gohebwyr o bob math ac o bob cyfrwng. Er fod yna adegaf am da ni'n teimlo falla fod y berthynas yn rhywbeth tebyg i'r berthynas rhwng y ci a'r postyn lamp. <laughs> Sef ni ydy'r postyn lamp sy'n goleio'r byd a fod y cwn yn gwneud be mae cwn yn arfa gwneud i fod postyn lamp. Dwi'n tybio mae'r ffordd arall rownd mae'r cyfryngau yn gweld beta. <laughs> Ond oherwydd bod yna gais gan teledu um, Saesneg uh, sy'n darlledu ar hyn o bryd o'r gynhadledd, dwi am siarad fwy o Saesneg na fos ni'n arfa'r naid yma yn gynharfon. Uh, I gweithion, mae arwydd y car a'r rhithro i'r ddwy flynydd nesaf sy'n arwain at Brexit. Gan fod y frwydr i gymryd barhau i fanteisio o'i perthynas ag Undeb Ewrop yn gwbl ganolog un gwleidyddiaeth ni. A gwrdd gloi'r gynhadledd, dwi'n ymddeheir o dim am ganol bwyntio'r materion hynny, gan fy mod yn ystod y dyddiad wyth yma wedi cael ymhenodi i bwyllgor Brexit ail siambr San Stefan, a dwi'n mawr o beithio gael rhaid gyd weithio ar tîm ar ferchogs gan y blaid yn hyr cyffredin yn arweinyddiaeth y sbrydoledu Eglis Safil Roberts, cyfrannu ar sylweddol Powell Williams fel yn llafarydd ni ar Brexit, llais unigryw Jonathan Edwards ar materion economaidd, Ac ia, un llais newydd, mae pawb wedi cyfeirio ato fo. Sydd eisoes wedi gwneud goblin o farc yn San Stefan, a sydd â rhan sylweddol i chwarae o fewn y blaid a Chymru dros y blynydd o nesa, ben leic, da iawn chi geredigion, diolch geredigion am ei eto. A mi fyddai yn falch iawn o gael cydweithio fo'r tîm yn y cynulliad ar materion Brexit hefyd. Yn wir, dwi'n hynod falch, o'r arweiniad a ddaeth o'r cynulliad yn gynharach eleni, pan gyhoeddwyd papur gwyn Cymru ar Brexit, ar y cyd rhwng Lian ac Arwyn Jones. Mae'n hysbys fod y rhan fwyar o'r graffio ar gyfer y ddogfen wedi i'n neud gan un arall ond seri ifanc ni, Steph Lewis. A ec derwyd o'n Cymru. Ac o'r gwrs, mi gafodd y papur gwyn gefnogaeth fwyafrif yn y cynulliad, a di Jill Evans yn effeithiol iawn yn perswadio pobl yn Senedd Ewrop fod papur gwyn Cymru yn sail ar gyfer y ffordd ymlaen. Now let me speak out exactly where we as a party stand on Brexit. We wanted Wales to remain in the European Union for several fundamental reasons. Wales is a European nation in terms of our history, our language, our culture and our Christian values. We had worked over four decades to attract inward investment to Wales, creating valuable jobs through companies from America, Japan and elsewhere, who saw Wales as a base to sell their products within a barrier-free European single market. Siemens up the road in Llanberis here, exporting medical diagnostic kits and employing 400 people is an ex excellent example of this. We are aware that 90% of Welsh farmers sheep and meat exports are sold to EU markets. We're conscious of the critical importance to our universities uh, is the facility to cooperate with research undertaken in continental Europe. And how valuable to our young people are the openings through the Erasmus scheme devised by Welshman Howell Kerry Jones. And we need know of the huge role of the social chapter in ensuring safeguard for our working people 
and for consumers. More than anything, we have embraced the united Europe because never again are we prepared to see our continent torn apart by two bloody, two, two bloody world wars as happened during the past century. But we lost the referendum here in Wales for the simple reason that those of us committed to the European ideal didn't make our case sufficiently effectively. Prior to the referendum, we perhaps hadn't been open enough in fighting the shortcomings of the EU, though Jill has preached this long and hard, goodness knows. And those weaknesses include the fact that it's still too much for a Europe of the old imperial states and not enough of a Europe of the people, as we witnessed so tragically in Catalonia this month. And yes, it was a disgrace, a disgrace that the EU Commission leaders were so slow in condemning the mindless violence of the Spanish militia against people. <laughs> against people who are doing no more than using their democratic rights to vote. So, Diolch Hoa Williams am fynd allan yna ac Adam a pawb a fi am i'r griffydd o'r criw. Diolch am fynd yna i godi llais. Thank you, Howell, for condemning that violence. And most of all, during the EU referendum campaign, we didn't force the advocates of Brexit to spell out what was their alternative. So, our fellow Welsh men and women voted Brexit for a host of different reasons. Some thought it would deliver an extra £350 million a week to the NHS. Some rejected the European Court of Justice, making binding decisions on Britain. Farmers disliked what they saw as bureaucratic delay in making payments. Small businesses saw Brussels as a source of overregulation, And some, to our shame, voted out because they disliked foreigners and were heedless and heartless to the plight of refugees. Roedd pobl Cymru wedi pleidleisio yn erbyn am gant y mil uh, o'r esyma ac yn erbyn uh, Ewrop, ac roedd Ewrop yn anerbyniol iddyn nhw. Ond nid oeddent o'r best, best ffordd yn glir dros beth yn nhw'n pleidleisio. These people knew, or they thought they knew, what they were against, but they never had, uh, got near to uniting around or articulating what was their alternative to the EU. Some advocated a relationship of the type enjoyed by Norway or Switzerland. Some argued for a free trade deal as negotiated by Canada. Some wanted a customs union without the social implications. Some wanted us just to walk away and take potluck on the basis of world trade terms. And tragically, it's that hard Brexit which now looks increasingly likely with tariff barriers of around 70% on our meat exports and perhaps 15 or 20 percent on manufactured goods. The lack of clarity, the lack of practicality, and the lack of unity in the alternatives put forward last year by Brexiteers is now coming home to roost. Some people now say that Parliament should just ignore the referendum. But I'm sorry, as a Democrat, that isn't for me a sustainable long-term option. What we have to do at Westminster, in the National Assembly, and at every possible opportunity available is to spell out that there are viable alternatives that recognize the genuine misgivings of those who voted leave, but which also safeguard the essential needs of our economy, of our farmers, of our tourist industry, of our universities, and of our young people. So to our friends who say that's impossible, it is possible, it's been spelt out, it exists within our own Wales white paper, pu published last January, drafted by Steph and signed on behalf applied by Leanne. It reluctantly accepts that we're leaving our full membership of the EU, but it projects an alternative based on having access to the single market and customs union. And while it recognizes that there may, there may be some constraints on the numbers moving into these islands, it preserves the right to move here to take up specific jobs for which they're needed, it's a compromise. Yes, our pro produce would still have to meet EU standards, such as safety standards, but so will they have to meet those standards if they're being exported to the EU under any other agreement. This is a formula similar to that enjoyed by Norway. It would mean Wales working closely in partnership with Europe, though no longer, regrettably, a part of the European Union. And let me tell you something else. 
When Jill and I took the Welsh White Paper to a very senior European parliamentary leader involved himself in the Brexit negotiations, he told us that if we could get a consensus around that White Paper, which he had already read in detail, he would be happy to regard it as a basis for negotiating a deal. We secured earlier this summer the agreement in principle of the SNP government in Scotland to this approach. And in the absence of the Northern Ireland Assembly and Government, we got the backing of several influential Irish politicians, North and South. But in my Nagatindev, Possib Argyle, Pibai and Rubeth of the Vivian San Stefan, and Votlon Yardel. And remember this that white paper was signed by Carolyn Jones and backed by his party, backed by Labour in the Assembly. And that's where the conflicting needs and values of Wales differ from those espoused at Westminster. When it came to voting on the principle of the single market access or customs union deal in the House of Commons, Labour MPs overwhelmingly refused to back the proposals supported by Labour in the Assembly. And only half a dozen Welsh Labour MPs voted for the amendment. The same thing happened in the Second Chamber. When Peter Hayne and I proposed the amendment along the lines of the Welsh White Paper, Labour's front bench peers actually voted against us. Now, the lesson of this is glaringly simple. We just cannot trust Welsh Labour MPs more than we can trust Welsh Tory MPs to put the well-being of Wales ahead, the, ahead of the narrow interests of their own party. And let me make it absolutely clear, when it comes to Europe, I don't trust Jeremy Corbyn more than I trust Theresa May with safeguarding the well-being of Wales. And that is why... And that is why it is essential, absolutely essential, that we have Plaid Cymru MPs fighting the cause of Wales. I as a Plaid Cymru, at your inni rhaid sydd ei dilon rhydd i roddi bydiannau Cymru yn gyntaf ar bob achlysur. If we could secure a deal on the basis of the Welsh White Paper, it is an answer um, which meets the requirements of the free movement of goods, services, money and people across the border in Ireland. And incidentally, it actually solves the problem of Gibraltar too. It meets the needs of Scotland, whether that country remains in the UK or eventually votes, as we hope, for independence. It meets the essential needs of Wales and leaves us free to move towards the maximum degree of independence that we choose to seek. That white paper, written by Steph, signed by Leanne, backed by the National Assembly, endorsed by Nicola, is ready for David Davis to put on the table in Brussels. So what are they waiting for? What are they waiting for? Get on with it, and get on with it now. And for my part, if the UK government for once listened to Wales, rather than to their own backwoodsmen, then I shall wish them well. But if they don't, and if they take us into the hardest of hard Brexits, as increasingly looks possible, then we shall fight them every inch of the way. And let me tell you this, if all that emerges from the negotiations being undertaken by David Davis and his fellow Brexiteers is that hardest of hard Brexits, then the Tory government is taking Wales down a road for which it has no mandate. The last general election refused to give Theresa May the endorsement she sought. If at the end of these tortuous negotiations the Tory government resorts to a hard Brexit and perhaps even walk away from the negotiations, at that point, Parliament must intervene. And to my mind, it is at that point that the issue must be re referred back to the people, because it is only the people who can overturn a decision taken by the people in a referendum. And I was delighted to hear Leanne endorse this position in her excellent speech yesterday. So, it's when they know exactly the implications of Brexit, then and only then can the people be in a position to make a final judgment. It is at that point that Brexit should, should be thrown out, lock, stock and barrel, and should be jettisoned not by politicians who will be regarded by the yellow press as having betrayed the voters. It should be annihilated by the voters themselves, the very people who were misled to taking us down this troubled and dangerous road. And Plaid Cymru will not rest until Wales is rescued from the jaws of the disaster into which the Tories have taken us. Mae'n ateb y gael. Ac ddewch i'r neges fynd o'r gynhadledd hon, 
and he and Drev Gairok Narvan. Trev I grieve and Lovn and Hannes Urok do wheel of the Nether and all. Rudan in Barodium lad, Bob Motbeda Thor, he got to Sophia de Marvero, he then Kavandir. Rudan in Bendervenol Awarchot, Bidiana and Guitwir, and Bisnesa and Fermuir, and Trivascolion and Popoli Bank. Rudan in Derbin, Popol Erait or Hanol Yasol Ach, Achem Dirois, and Odi William Rid, as in Bot Lonnie Wooden Han on Kambitas Nee. Rudan in Barodi Barchim, we have Riva Milishot, he atal in the Bureau. On need are in Rio Breeze. I'm again in Setliad, so the Pontiorg again does, or what I'm Catel in the Bureau, on an Catuk Setliad, a Marvero, it and Cavandir. A good on him, Catuni Dimum the Riet, Montori and Alfaver and Linden, Ibabu Shadir for the Mline, at the Vaishuid and Humri, on Sinkanig, a Hippie, he horse let it pertain, a Kiri Werdon. Dunapam, my blind horn more as well, we see Gumri Hedio. A faham y mae'n ddyletswydd ar hynny, oll, wrth droi am adre, i wneud hynny gan dorchyn llewis, a bwrwy i'r gwaith fel erioed o'r blaen, i wneud dim llai nag achub yn cenedl yn awr eu hargyfwng. Diolch, siwrnas, saff a diogel chi adre, a chyfeillion i'r gad.